Okay, so you know what's happening with Iran. So here's what's happening. Uh, we showed you this before. This is a guy named Pat Clausen, and this is how these guys talk openly. And so I just want, and this is what he says about Iran. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. Crisis initiation. So that's Orwellian speak for how do we start a war with a country we want to invade and steal their natural resources? How do we do that? You have to have a crisis initiation. That means starting a war. That's what he means. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. <laughs> what would be best for U.S. interests? Not someone's attacking us, someone's threatening us. Hey, what's best for our interests? We could probably get more oil out of Venezuela if we invaded it. Hey, we could probably get more oil out of Libya to our American corporations. It's in our interest. We could probably put some military bases in Libya, too, if we invaded. Same thing with Iraq. <laughs> so that's what he means by in our interests. So, they, he's, so he's saying, how do we start a war? Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall we had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked, which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing, which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack. And we didn't go into the, the uh, Iraq, the first Gulf War, the first time, until there were reports of soldiers throwing babies out of incubators on the floor, on the ground, and letting them die. And we didn't go into the Gulf War the second time until we, there was what WMDs everywhere in Iraq. And we didn't go into Libya, and we didn't go into Syria until there. Just one made-up reason to go into a war. One lie after another for war. Another false flag after false flag to go into a war. <laughs> Again, you don't, does it take a... <laughs> this is on the internet. This is out there. That's the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. <laughs> uh, one can combine other means of pressure with sanctions. Uh, I mentioned that explosion... Uh, on August 17th, uh, we could step up the pressure. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? <laughs> They're laughing about how to trick a country into a war. That's, how, that's who these people are. They are psychopathic, bloodthirsty maniacs who equivocate, who... who Think dead bodies equal profits. Because they do. That's who these people are. That's who Washington, D.C. is. And that's who the news media is. And here's, this, here's the guy. Here's Pompeo. Listen to them. Uh, but in terms of how you think about problem sets, I, when I was a cadet, what's the, first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Mm. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, and stole. That's... <laughs> It was like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's all we do is lie, cheat, and steal. That's, we have tried to check them out. <laughs> we lie ourselves into war. We lie ourselves out. And so here he is. Ready? Here, here, here's one of those courses being put to work. It is the assessment of the United States government that the Islamic Republic of Iran is responsible for the attacks that occurred in the Gulf of Oman. This is only the latest in a series of attacks instigated by the Islamic Republic of Iran and its surrogates against American and allied interests. And they should be understood in the context of 40 years of unprovoked aggression against freedom-loving nations. 40 years of unprovoked aggression by Iran against, do you know the country next door? <laughs> we completely destroyed, killed millions of people, made millions of refugees, destroyed that country. You know the country next to that, Afghanistan, we've been occupying for the last 20 years? 
You know, the country just a little farther to the west of that, Libya, we, we, we invaded that, killed everybody, turned it into a failed state. Now it's a haven for terrorists, and they have open slave trading. But Iran, <laughs> Iran is the country that's been doing aggression for the last 40 years. Um, and by the way, he didn't take any questions. So the big guy who admits he's a big liar in public didn't take any questions after he said that uh, we got to go. Oh, and here's Ben Norton. Gee, Mike, this sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? And he links to the 30-year anniversary of the Tonkin Gulf lie launched the Vietnam War. So the Gulf of Tonkin, that was how they got us into Vietnam. <laughs> they said they attacked us. didn't happen. Um, Max Blumenthal says, well, remember the Maine? Yeah. Operation Northwoods, Gulf of Tonkin, Kuwait incubator babies, mm -hmm. Saddam's WMDs, Qaddafi soldiers, Viagra spree, Viagra spree, last messages from Aleppo, Doma, burning aid on Colombian Venezuelan bridge. And now today's attacks in the Gulf of Oman. All bullshit. Because who's the terrorist? The terrorist is the United States. Who's the terrorists? Saudi Arabia and the United States. Those are the terrorists. Uh, this guy says, Senator, uh, Secretary Pompeo must explain why would Iran target a Japanese registered vessel? So what they said was Iran is trying to screw with the Japanese oil tanker. <laughs> why? <laughs> Makes no sense why they would do that. Uh... So he says, you must explain why Iran would target a Japanese registered vessel while Japan's prime minister, Abe, is conducting a state visit in Iran. It makes no sense. And the GOP must believe that the United States citizens don't follow global politics and will believe anything they lie about. Well, it, no, it's got nothing to do. It's the news media is going to push the lie anyway. And what, I'm going to show you how, they, they, how they've covered this. It's so jaw-droppingly bad. But it's expected. And we predicted this. And this is why we have a show. Because they're not going to tell you the truth about this. Uh, and just, just to let you know, uh, so they said that the, 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 uh, the Iranians attacked the ship and they had mines. They attached mines to it. That's a lie because the owner of the ship... Uh, the Japanese owner of the oil, one of the oil tankers attacked near, the, near Iran on Thursday, said the vessel was struck by a projectile and not by a mine, which is what the U.S. officials assessed at the, as the source of the blast. So it, it, that's just they, right away. Immediately, you know it's a lie. And here's Donald Trump. He goes on Fox and Friends. Well, Iran did do it, and you know they did it because you saw the boat. I guess one of the mines didn't explode, and it's probably got essentially Iran written all over it. It's got a rod written all over it. So here is so that even the guy who owns the boat says it didn't happen. So here is um, here's this uh, here's this CBS report. You want to hear this? Watch this. U.S. sanctions on Iran already had raised the potential risk of a response in the region. We want to go to Charlie Daggett. Who so he already lays the foundation for a bullshit report. Hey, we've put sanctions on Iran, and that's already laid the foundation for them to attack us. We've been waiting for them to retaliate against us. What? That's how you start the story? Who told you to start it that way? Who told you to write that? Who said write it that way? Along the Gulf of Oman with why this area is such a flashpoint. He's reported already extensively from the Middle East, and he's there again this morning. Char oh, this area is such a flashpoint. It's a flashpoint because we're there fucking with Iran. <laughs> it's a flashpoint. Do you hear this? Do you hear this yes. stuff? Why is this area such a flashpoint? Maybe because we're there fucking with Iran? <laughs> and because Trump wants to start a war with them? <laughs> why is it such a flashpoint? Well, you're going to find out why it's a flashpoint, except he's not going to tell you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's hard to overstate how crucial these waterways are to the transportation of oil and gas from uh, this region. Mm -hmm. A third of all shipped oil comes through here. Mm. And because that narrow waterway, the Strait of Hormuz, is situated just off the coast of Iran, it gives that country a significant point of leverage. Yesterday's incidents follow similar coordinated attacks a month ago that targeted four tankers right off this port here. Again, 
Where, I, I, how long have you been talking before you say this isn't happening? This isn't while well, the, 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 the State Department, Pompeo, Trump, they're lying again. What are you waiting for? What is this guy waiting for? Hey, you know what? The Japanese guy who owns the boat says it didn't even happen that way. And what the hell are we doing there anyway? And this doesn't make any sense that they would attack a Japanese boat. Makes no sense. He doesn't say any of this. He starts, he's reporting it in a way that makes you believe the government story. That's how he's reporting it. Oh, boy, th this is just, remember those other coordinated attacks? Yeah, this is like that. They're, they're in. What is, what, a, what an on-purpose tool. And now you know that this guy was selected. He's been groomed to do this job since he was in kindergarten. Iran denies involvement in those attacks, too. But Iran has repeatedly threatened to cut off this vital artery. <laughs> what the fuck? Do you hear this guy? Yes. Iran denies that they did it. But so all of a sudden Trump's a madman and he's working for Russia against our own country, except now everything he says you'll repeat uncritically. When he wants to go invade another country and kill a bunch of people. He's a psychopath made man, but let's have him run our military. He's a traitor to our country. Let's have him run our military on without any question from the media. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This guy doesn't even tell you that the that the Japanese boat owner said that didn't happen. Whenever there is a dispute with the U.S. or its regional allies, including Saudi Arabia or here in the U.A. I like when they say a dispute. Whenever there's a dispute, a dispute, you mean like whenever we decide to fuck with them? You mean like that kind of a dispute? Because remember, this isn't happening in the Gulf of Mexico. This is happening off the shores of Iran, not the United States. E. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we were aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln carrier, and the admiral there told us one of their primary missions is to safeguard the free flow of commerce in this region. Well... It's also worth remembering that the Lincoln was sent here specifically in response to perceive. It's also worth memory remembering that our country lies about this kind of shit all the time. That's what it's really worth remembering, you fucking tool, you mouthpiece for the military industrial complex. And why does this guy suck so bad? <laughs> this guy sucks so bad because he's funded by the people he's supposed to be investigating and exposing. He's funded by the military industrial complex and fossil fuel companies, oil companies. That's who pays his check. That's who funds CBS News. And war sells, baby. Trump and war sells. <laughs> what a shit job this guy's doing. Iranian threats. But it hasn't proven to be much of a deterrent, Michelle. All right. It hasn't proved. So he's just told you that Iran has been doing this. That's what he just said. <laughs> Fake news happens on CBS, NBC, and ABC, and CNN every day. That is fake news. That is propaganda for war by the military-industrial complex-funded news organization. It's just a propaganda arm. You're never going to get the truth about the war from CBS or NBC or Rachel Maddow or CNN. Never. <laughs> so here is uh, here's here's how NPR, Na National Public Radio, they're supposed to be they're supposed to be, uh, you know, just straight journalists. Right. Because they're not they're not beholden to advertisers, except they are. Except they are. How many how many commercials can you run for a fucking bank and still call yourself public radio? Apparently, the number is endless. You ever turn on public radio? Hey, there's a there's a there's a commercial for Bank of America, and then there's a, there's a commercial for Raytheon. Hey, there's a commercial for Archer Daniels Midland. Hey, there's a commercial for Walmart. That's public radio. So here's public radio. This is like uh, real news grab this. So this is the, the guy's talking is uh, he's Admiral William Fallon. He's the former head of the U.S. Central Command. And this is the video they said they that the United States put out, the Pompeo put out, Trump's administration put out that said, look, there's an Iranian boat and they're and they're going up to this tanker and they're taking down one of their mines because it didn't go off and they don't want it to leave any evidence what they're most likely doing is, as 
helping people because the people who were rescued from that oil tanker were rescued by Iranians. <laughs> the Japanese and Norwegian people who were rescued from that oil tanker were rescued by Iranians. So here, they'll, but listen to what the former uh, head of U.S. General Command, listen to what he says on NPR uncritically, unchallenged. We've, uh, there's little doubt that's, that's what it is. The U.S. vessel in the vicinity, one of our destroyers, saw uh, numerous IRGC uh, boats uh, around each of the tankers that was attacked. And I think uh, the only question, I've seen some speculation that this may be some kind of an independent action. I doubt that uh, sincerely. I think this was something that was premeditated, and it's uh, an escalatory step in a road to I'm not sure where, but this is Iran. This is an. This is for sure. This is, this is what happened. That's an admiral lying for war. That's what they do, baby. How do you get to be an admiral if you're going to be critical of war? That's not how you get to be an admiral. You get to be an admiral if you question when the country and the State Department wants to go to war. That's not how you get to be an admiral. You get to be an admiral when you cheer on every goddamn fucking war, and that's what he's doing. So if this action is perceived as an escalation towards war, <laughs> right? Why is our reaction to go along with it? Right. What do we do? What you're right. Right. So you have the insight to go, wow, this looks like they want to escalate war. Their their intention is to create war. What's our intention? <laughs> what are we doing there? Somebody brought up the petrodollar in the top chat, too, as they were going So they through. never mentioned the petrodollar. So if people don't know what that is, what the petrodollar is in the 70s, when the United States went off the gold standard, they made a deal with Saudi Arabia that said, hey, if you make... Everybody who buys oil from you, f buy it from you in U.S. dollars. You can use our military anywhere you want, which is a big reason why we're in Yemen, which is a big reason why we're in Iraq, Libya, Syria. Okay, this isn't not making this up. John Kerry admitted this in front of the Senate testimony, which we've played on this show. Uh, so let me just add, so there you go. So that that's how that's how they're reporting it. It couldn't be worse. Uh, they're doing exactly what I said they would do, exactly what we always say they do, because they always do it. <laughs> what, what, was, what is that? Well, they lie about war. They lie about war. And guess what they're doing? They're lying about war. Hey, we just added St. Louis and Honolulu to our live tour schedule. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all the tickets for all our live shows. We might be coming to your town. Go check right now at jimmydorecomedy.com. And if you like the show and want to support it, become a premium member. You can become a patron or through PayPal or go right to jimmydorecomedy.com and become a premium member. That's the best way. We'll see you at a live show.